Hey guys, Jason Creel, and we are still at the uh, GIE Plus Expo and checking out the equipment. I'm here with Weston with Xmark, and he is one of the design engineers on some of the new autonomous equipment that you're going to be seeing uh, in coming years. So I've got him. We're going to we're going to interview and let him to tell us about it, uh, what's coming, and, and what you might be seeing, and, and time frame, price range, and whatever details he can tell us about these mowers. Let's get started right now. All right, so I'm going to start off and just show you this one. We're not going to go in detail about this, but this is their electric stand-on mower. Uh, still, still going to be a little ways uh, off on coming to market, um, but you're going to start seeing more and more of these. But then we want to move to some of the more fully autonomous equipment because that's what uh, Weston been, has been working on: a radius here and a turf tracer. So that's Weston, are both are both of these? These are both fully autonomous mowers, is that correct? Yeah, so these are our autonomous test vehicles. Um, and basically with these vehicles, you pull up onto the property, you drive around the perimeter, and then you drive around any obstacles. And then you hop off, hit the green go button, cut it loose, and it'll mow the rest of the grass for you. What's the technology that makes that, makes that work? Uh, so, how does it memorize the lawn? Sure, so we're, we're using a lot of technology that's come from ag so GPS um, you know we're looking at a lot of different sensors right now trying to evaluate different technologies different sensors um, you know there's really two big things we want to make sure before we release these products one that they're safe and two that they make money for the landscapers right? these are gonna have a higher upfront cost we got to make sure it pays off on the back end to make sure that it's a good product. So this is not necessary. I mean, I know obviously homeowners are going to buy whatever they want to buy, just like a homeowner now might buy a commercial mower. But but your the, the vision is that these are going to be out, out running. Landscapers will be running those just like they would a, a, a regular laser tree now. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So this is really built for the landscaper. Um, you know, we're still evaluating how it's going to fit into the landscaper's business model. Does that take you down to a one-man crew? Yeah. What other equipment do you have to have on the trailer? That kind of thing. So. What can take us around the mower? What, what difference is, uh, obviously, it's the technology that makes it autonomous. Uh, and you can talk about that. But other than that, like, it, it's a radius. What, what's different about this radius from the, the you know, gasoline power radius? Sure. So up top here, we've got a, a GPS antenna. So that's what allows us to find where we're at in the world, you know. Um, and then we've also got on this unit uh, some collision sensors up here that help us detect when objects are in front of the vehicle. Um, you know, this is just a test unit, so we're still evaluating different things. This one's got a bumper bar on it. Um, that most likely wouldn't be on a production vehicle. Um, and then back behind the seat here, we've got a big box full of electronics that allow us to do all this fancy stuff. It's similar in, in the bumper and all that, similar to like a, a automatic vacuum cleaner, you know how it, it senses when it's about to run into the wall or something? Right, so on this unit, that's just kind of a backup sensor, you know, that okay. that if, if something, some obstacle was in front of it, it would stop. Um, yeah. But I'll, Really, we rely on our detection sensors up front, which would be like late, uh, radar and LIDAR um, and okay. those kind of things. Now, maybe I'm missing something, but if it's autonomous, how come it has a chair? Like, what, who, who's sitting on it? Yeah, so that's really used for the training, right? Oh, so, I got you. So the most intuitive controls to a landscaper today are the machine that they've been running for 20 years, right? Yeah. So they're going to get in the seat, they're going to just drive around, yeah. tell it where it can and can't mow, you know. We've got this switch on it right here that uh, allows you to, you know, you switch it into perimeter mode, you drive around, and then you go to an obstacle, switch it into obstacle mode, and then switch it back. And that really lets you train the system where it can and can't mow. I see. And, and what's your ETA? I know maybe I don't know exactly, but when would this something like this hit the market? Sure. So this is still three to five years out. You know, like I said, we got to nail that safety and then also the profitability yeah. for a landscaper before we uh, release it as a product. But you can you 
can bet that when we release it, it's going to have those two things. Yeah, and then the pricing on it, I, I, it's maybe it's, I know I know you probably don't have a, a price, but yeah, I know as the technology improves, I'm, I'm sure the price yeah. would, would come down. But is there is any ballpark idea of what something like this would cost? It's really too far out to yeah. say. You know, a lot of these sensors are very expensive compared to the usual mower parts. Yeah. There you um, go. And we're still evaluating, you know, safety-wise what we need. Yes. Uh, and that's going to really drive price. So, do you feel like uh, in this? In the autonomous mower space, I'm just curious about this. Is it a is it a race to the to the get the first one out? You know, obviously we got small robot mowers, but like, is this a race or is it just like not necessarily a race? But we're just trying to build the best one because everybody's working on their own project. You know, uh, I guess just like everybody's got a standard mower now. You know, was it a race to be the first standard, or is it trying to build the best standard, or is it a little bit of both, or what do you think? We're we're really trying to build the best product. You know, okay. you, you've been able to buy autonomous bolt-on kits for you know ten years. Yeah. Um, but the safety's not there, and the profitability's not yeah. there for the landscaper. I so, got you. Um, We've really got to make sure that those things are in place before we release this product. Okay. All right, so that's what's coming, and then uh, we've got something similar here. Obviously, for those that are they want a turf tracer, and so what what would be the difference on this one, uh, Weston? Co compare uh, the turf tracer. Obviously, we know the difference in a walk behind mower versus a you know traditional sit on zero turn. But is there any other differences as far as this mower from the one we just looked at? Sure. So we've got optical cameras on this one so a little bit different sensors um, we also have a uh, lidar on this one as well um, you know as part of this evaluating different technologies we're also trying to evaluate what's the right platform to automate you know um, and that really goes back to how profitable is it for the landscaper yeah. and how many uh, how many properties can you use it on and that kind of thing well, what is what are the obstacles I'm, I'm, I'm asking, well, previous question but like at Xmark campus are these out running mowing grass you are testing these currently yep. yeah so these are both operational vehicles um, if you look at our new marketing video that we just released our innovation video uh, you'll see a big circle X logo at the end of it that's cut into the uh, uh, Xmark park right across the street from our factory so I used one of these autonomous units to cut that in so right. and so what what is it that's holding it back from why can't I buy one today why, if y'all are using this mowing grass, why aren't they for sale? Yeah, so, like I said, safety. We gotta make sure that these are safe vehicles. Um, just like we do on our, our standard mowers, you know, we have tons of ANSI testing we have to do. Um, these are another level of, of testing. Um, and we gotta ensure they're safe before we release them. Alright, let's move on to this other mower that, that obviously is uh, the featured product y'all have in your booth here. And I want to just show it to the audience first, but look, look at this. So this is uh, when you think about, I, I guess this one is fully autonomous. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to train this one. Uh, is, is, that, is that correct? Yeah, so th this is really a concept vehicle that's kind of forward looking, you know, even further out than those units we just looked at. Um, and so it would be fully autonomous. It's using vision as uh, the sensors on it. It's basically a turf tracer frame underneath all that um, with a 48 inch depth on it. So this is like a self driving car almost. I mean, you know, a similar kind of concept. Yeah, like yeah, it's it, going to deliver my pizza for me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I know it's more grass. So I'm saying it, it's, it's a, a more expensive technology. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and like I said, this is even further out than the yeah. vehicles we looked at uh, just now because we still got to figure out what does a business model look like for a, a vehicle like this. Uh, yeah, because I'm thinking from a business standpoint, I mean, I don't, if I got to drop it off and sit there and wait on it, you know, I still like, I might as well be driving it if I'm waiting. So I, but, uh, you know, but you can't have like, 10 of them, I can't just go drop right. 10 of them off and get them all going and say that because I can't afford 10. You know, so I think that makes sense. I, I look for, I don't doubt that there's some good answers to those questions. I just look forward to yeah, hearing what y'all's answers are. But I'm, I'm going to get a little uh, show around of it. Just
so you can see this mower. They've really got this thing featured. It's a cool 48 inch deck. seen one of these at Max Martin dealer lately that's for sure for miles on and I, I guess we should uh, I should ask this earlier but these, these are all battery powered I mean like yeah so the, this the rechargeable battery battery powered, battery powered. Okay. and on, can you give us a, a, a short run time on, on the other ones we looked at they're, they're battery powered um, as well what kind of run time are we talking about the radius and the turf race? Yes. So those are still have engines on. Oh, those have engines. Okay. Yeah, those are not battery powered. But the first, um, the first, the standard here is what kind of runtime you get on on y'all's battery power, electric equipment. Yeah. So that's a fully electric stand on unit. Um, okay. That'd be like a 2023 kind of product. Okay. Um, we're targeting a six hour runtime on that. You know, if, you. if you're in heavy conditions, it's going to be less. If yeah. you're in lighter conditions, it's going to be more. Yeah. But six hours i'm just thinking like most people if they have an eight hour work day they're not necessarily running the mower eight hour or even six hours you know so right drive time and trim time and everything like that so i could see that um yeah fitting most people's schedule all right and last thing we're going to look at this is a 21 inch uh, this one uh, it could be available you, you think that this would be available in 2022 or 2023 yeah. next year we should okay have. so this you may be able to get this uh 2022 and battery powered push more again it, you know, it's kind of the progression you've seen a lot of battery powered handheld equipment it's obviously been in the market for a while now there's a battery powered um, kind of residential grade mowers out there but now the commercial companies are starting to get into it so what tell us the details on this compared to you know the, the more traditional 21s that we see all over the place right here what's what's going to be the difference other than it running on battery so uh that's hopefully going to be the only difference right performance uh, should be comparable yeah a lot of the 21s on the market today um, that are battery powered uh, just don't work for the landscaper you know yeah um, we've heard of landscapers triple cutting their properties yes. to get it cut um, so what we want to do is we really want to nail that quality of cut that people expect from an XMark. Uh, we're not going to release a, a battery product unless it has that. And how, what kind of run time would you get on this? Um, so it's swappable batteries. Uh, I think we're still working on exactly what the run time is for each battery, but um, it will have swappable batteries so you can get through the day, um, similar to your handheld equipment. Yeah. You know? What's the price difference on one of these compared to the, the gasoline power? Um, you'd have to ask one of the marketing guys on that. They don't let me say price on that's the fine. stuff that's closer. That's <laughs> fine. I understand. Appreciate Weston joining us, talking about the equipment. These engineers, uh, the one, the design engineer, they, they put these machines together. And why I appreciate talking with them because they, you could tell they, there's a lot of thought that goes into them. Years and years of research and development and testing before we see them. Uh, the store and, they, and then they you know even when they come out and you get feedback and they're upgrading one model over the next you know they take in consideration the feedback they get so appreciate time hopefully this is uh eye-opening to you guys to see what's coming in the future and we'll talk to you next time bye